I may have gone a little overboard on this rack build, but it was for my son. The dad and me took over. And my son's nickname is Wild Wesley, so I don't know. It was kind of fitting. But anyways, let's jump into it. All right, back to projects here. Need to get Wesley's rack done before Christmas and his birthday. I think we're gonna give it to him on his birthday. It'll be nice because I can work out of some of these piles that I already have. We got some dirty plans here. He wants a red, white, and blue stand. He wanted the colors of the 4th of July. So we're gonna need 10 at 36 and a half, and six at 13, and three at 16, and four at 60 high. That'll be our legs. So we are length, 36 and a half, depth, 13 by 16. So it's pretty much the smaller three by 40 gallon rack for axolotls in the future, hopefully. Got them cut, now getting them painted. All painted up and on to building the squares here i got the sheet down so i don't mess up the paint and if you want to see how i build these racks completely step by step i do have video of those just youtube search lrb rack build i got the tops painted white gonna add a little pizzazz got a little blue paint here i'm gonna take the brush and kind of flick it around i'm gonna start with the blue let it dry and then we'll go to the red all right, well, that should do it for the blue here. Not a bad start. This is actually going to be the bottoms of them. If you look here, I added a smiley face into each one of these. This one actually has two. Boom, boom, boom. And that one's got one right there. You know, a little subliminal happiness. Never hurt nobody. And now to add the red. I was thinking about doing something else on the top side of these, but I forgot I already flipped this one over because, I mean, you're not going to see the bottom on the bottom shelf. And it actually took a lot more time to do this than you may think because it took a few techniques so first i just hit some medium splatters boom boom just a little bit of paint on the brush not a whole lot then i went through and i used both hands just kind of splattering all these little spots into it then after that i started just whipping big old globs of paint down so it did take three different techniques and then added the smiley face so it did take a little time to do this but it'll look cool at the end because i'm about to smack that red in to contrast it real nice and should pop so what i'm doing here to get this look as you can see here in the different stages i'm sprinkling the little dots of red paint in there by just slapping the brush across my hand like psh, psh, and it splatters it we get the red dot and i just start walloping globs of paint in different directions they kind of give me a few streamlines to work off of and then since this blue is mostly dry it's not going to turn to purple i can brush it this is why you want it to let the blue dry so it doesn't mix into purple and then i just kind of brush that around like eh or that looks more done than compared to that and i try not to hit my smiley faces leave those more open that way they're more predominant but something a little different all right better get these in this crazy storm look at this sky oh my all right so it's the next day here super windy as you can see but i didn't really like the look and finish of this design so i ended up getting some cans of spray paint and taped some paper cups on top of them just to push the nozzle through that way i can get a stick or something or be able to fling and splatter some paint so I can pull it up in that little cup and then I can get it to splatter and hopefully this will give me a much better effect as far as what I was imagining in my mind because that red smear and stuff eh, I just was not feeling it but I did end up liking this and obviously art is not my profession but I do love how this light blue ended up making this pop now that I am liking this light blue contrast on here, I do want to go back to the hardware store, get some light red. That way I can get two different contrasts of red and blue between because I got the red and blue on the bottom layer and then now I'll get a two different lighter tone reds and blues on top. That way you can get a double contrast which adds more depth into the actual art, the paint. That way when you look into this you can just keep seeing new things here and there and here as you can see much much more brighter red the same thing got the cup on it and ready to go i think i found some balance for it i'm liking it that splatter spray paint really helped just gives it many layers to blend in so when he does look at it or ever spends time to look at it there's just so much going on cool I love it could hang these 
these up on the wall. I'd do something else more brighter for that. But anyways, what do you guys think? And here's all three completely finished. Figured I might as well go ahead and show you this now because this will probably be the last time you even may see this because I don't know odds of me filming these tops again will be slim to none because I'll more than likely be showing either the fish or axolotls and what's going on in the tank instead of this but I dig it I dig it but more importantly it's how my son will like it or at least I hope he likes it he may not even care but I don't know I for me I had to go above and beyond for him dad thing you know being a dad next step for Wesley's stand here and this glow in the dark paint sitting around I figure on the underneath and then this will be where the tank sits or actually this one will be where the tank sits you can see on the edges here I'm gonna do the edges with this that way it'll light around the bottom of the tank see if it works we'll see how it looks and then for this I'm just gonna splatter some underneath kind of like make stars or something I don't know I'm gonna slap some glow in the dark paint because that'll be where the light will sit so that'll definitely get some little in essence since i only have so much of it those are done time to get wesley's stand complete there's his 55 gallon doing good cold fish and gold lasers and the rest of the pieces we got the legs we got the shells and we got the 40 gallon which he's wanting this for some axolotls which should be cool and as you can see here it's going to be three shelves so this could actually hold three 40 gallons kind of overkill doing double on the sides you could just do it like this but this will give me a nice sturdy base being in a kid's room is going to be a lot of bouncing around and i want to make sure it's nice and sturdy but three shelves got the four legs and the three tops but we're only going to be holding one tank on this one. And in the future, if he wants more tanks, well, he can do that. All right, let's get the legs on. Boom. Boom. Bang. Bang. <laughs> Pow. And you see the glow-in-the-dark trim on the edge. Up underneath, it's got glow-in-the-dark. When he gets older, he may be able to see this. But he'll definitely see that. And even underneath. All right, I think we're about, I think we're about axolot already. Just can't wait to see how this glow in the dark does. Did test it in the fish room. It was pretty cool. So it did work. We'll see how the lighting does in here. And I know that may not be everybody's cup of tea. But hey, to a kid, that's wild. To a uh, Martha Stewart type, may went with a more solid color. Ooh. To me, it still looks a little unfinished with the edges all being white here. So I'm going to paint this one red and this one blue. And last but not least, we got Wesley's future axolotl tank sitting on his new custom stand. Video on that soon. A little something different than the normal black racks I usually do. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Take care and I'll see you next time.